Tanuki. It certainly is one of the most fascinating and enigmatic animals in the folklore of Japan. There are innumerable tales of its mischievous and hedonistic antics, pranks, and deceptions, not the least of which is its ability to transform itself into other shapes, both inanimate and animate including appearing as a human. But why in the world would a human want to turn himself into a tanuki? Well, when you've heard my story, I think you'll understand. I was born on the coast of the Sea of Japan, in the quiet fishing village of Nabune on the Noto Peninsula in Ishikawa Prefecture. Nabune is located about 12 kilometers northeast of Wajima, and it's actually a part of that lovely old seaside city that's so famous for its traditional lacquerware its delicious seafood, and of course, its morning market. My father was a master craftsman. He worked in Wajima inlaying beautiful artwork onto the surfaces of lacquerware pieces. My mother helped our friends and relatives in the selling of their catch of the day at the Wajima morning market. As for me, well, I guess I was still just a pretty normal schoolboy at that point. I describe my hometown of Nabune as a quiet fishing and farming village. However, in the year 1577, the quiet was dramatically shattered. Kenshi Uesumi the famous warlord of Ichigo province to the northeast, had captured Nanao Castle, the strongest fortification on the Noto Peninsula, in the autumn of 1576. Encouraged by his conquest, he advanced his army onward to subjugate the entire region. The Uesuni forces crushed everybody in their path, and in 1577, swept toward the village of Nabune. The villagers, who didn't have any real weapons, started making preparations for an ambush using things like long-bladed hoes and scythes. But it quickly became obvious how utterly futile this would be. Nonetheless, they were driven by their burning resolve to defend their homeland, and so they asked their wise village elders what they should do. The elders instructed the villagers to create masks out of the bark of trees and long tangled hair out of seaweed and then noisily beating on drums to make a night attack on the sleeping Uesumi forces. It is said that the Uesumi forces shocked and terrified by this nocturnal freak attack launched by unbelievably grotesque monsters shrieking and beating their battle drums, dispersed and fled without even putting up a fight. This was the legendary beginning of the well-known Gojinjo Daiko drumming ensemble, whose galvanizing, commemorative performances continue to this day 
as celebrations of gratitude to the local gods for their help in this crisis. As a young boy growing up in Nabune, I was absolutely enthralled by this story. Of course, at that age, I had never heard the word shaman, but I did believe in my heart that this was not simply a matter of brave villagers dressing up in scary costumes and ferociously beating drums, but rather the monster demons themselves being summoned by the protective goddess Okitsuhime of Heguda Island, about 45 kilometers off the coast, in order to possess the villagers and turn them into hideous agents that could drive off the enemy and save our home. In fact, I would often have vivid dreams about these demon drummers.
You can easily imagine how my dreams became my reality. For as long as I can remember, all I wanted was to learn how to play taiko and become one of those awesome demon drummers. This special tradition can only be passed down to those who were born in the village of Nabune. My right to be able to qualify made me very, very happy. <laughs> 